people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Yoga event is held here. Severe injustice and they should be stopped. We should raise our voices. Condemn this uh, brutal act. Hello viewers, welcome to Newspeak South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Indian Prime Minister Modi slams Pakistan for breeding terrorism. Major Pakistan-backed infiltration plan foiled by Indian security forces. And United States announces further troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. Terrorism in all its forms and manifestations poses serious threats to international peace and security. India remains a consistent victim of this threat since decades. Raising this issue at 12th BRICS summit virtually, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched a scathing attack against those countries that are openly supporting terrorism. He also urged the international community to take the necessary steps to enhance cooperation to prevent and combat terrorism, including cross-border movement of terrorists. We have a report. While the world is still combating the threat of COVID-19 with the hopes of having a vaccine soon, a massive threat called terrorism continues to prevail with no solution in sight. India, being one of the prime victims of this menace, has been taking up the issue of state-sponsored terrorism at various world forums for years. Slamming the terror-breeding countries at the 12th BRICS summit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi made it clear that terrorism is the biggest international threat today and an influential organization like the BRICS must address the issue of cross-border terrorism. Modi's remarks at the summit are being seen as an indirect hit towards Pakistan, which is a globally non-sponsor of terrorism and allows terror groups to target India from its soil. Excellencies, Atankwad Aaj Vishwa Ke Samne Sabse Badi Samasya Hai. Hame Ye Sunishit Karna Hoga कि आतंकवादियों को समर्थन और सहायता देने वाले देशों को भी दोषी ठहराया जाए और इस समस्या का संगठित तरीके से मुकाबला किया जाए पाकिस्तान आर्मी एंड द आईएसआई यूज टेररिज्म एज देयर स्ट्रेटजिक वेपन अगेंस्ट इंडिया रिकॉग्नाइजिंग दिस थ्रेट इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी इज स्टैंडिंग विद इंडिया to prevent and fight terrorism, including cross-border movement of terrorists into India from Pakistani territory. India's relations with international community are broadening by each passing day, and the country is not only involved in planning the counter-terrorism strategies, but is also engaged in many military joint exercises with nations all over the world. Today, दुनिया के बड़े बड़े देशों के साथ साझा अभ्यास कर रही है आतंक के खिलाफ हम रणनीतिक साझेदारियां कर रहे हैं भारत की सेनाओं ने दिखाया है कि वो आतंक के ठिकानों पर कभी भी कहीं भी स्ट्राइक कर सकते Prime Minister Modi's statement against state-sponsored terrorism comes at a time when Pakistan's nefarious strategies against India are getting hammered at all corners of the country. Under the ongoing operations against anti-India forces, the special cell of Delhi police foiled a major terror attack and nabbed two terrorists in the national capital. The terrorists belong to Pakistan-based terror organization jaish e mohammed which was also responsible for the 2019 Pulwama attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir. 
Back in August this year, Delhi police had failed another such terror conspiracy in the city as they nabbed Abu Yusuf Khan, a terrorist associated with Islamic State of Khorasan province, while he was planting IEDs to carry out major strikes in crowded places of New Delhi. This is what in fact Pakistan does every year. Every year during Indian festivals, uh, Pakistan sends terrorists across the borders. Uh, the Indian security for forces have hammered Pakistan like hell and they have bombarded and destroyed many of the Pakistani posts. Not only that, but then the terror launch pads also have been destroyed. So uh, this is the exact language which Pakistan understands. And Pakistan, um, uh, this shows that Pakistan is not bothered about its country at all. When they are in the grey list of FATF, they, are still, they still have the cheek of sending uh, terrorists across the borders. Pakistan's deep state, that is the army, has been indulging in malicious activities like infiltration and espionage to unleash mayhem in India. In a sophisticated world where the other countries are looking forward to establishing peace, harmony and developing new technologies for the advancement of the world settlement, Pakistan's state policy of terrorism is causing violence and is creating an environment of distrust in the world. Pakistan continues to support cross-border infiltration into India. For this, its army regularly violates ceasefire agreement with India and sends terrorists from across the border to carry out attacks in India. On the eve of Diwali festival, Pakistan army launched indiscriminate firing at the borders, killing at least 10 civilians and injuring many. Just few days later, Indian security forces eliminated at least four Jaish terrorists hiding in a moving truck in Jammu. Condemning Pakistan's support to terrorism, Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar called for an international collaborative effort against terrorism in a recently held conclave in India. In one of the deadliest phase of this year, Pakistan Army initiated heavy cross-border shelling on November 13th after Indian Army foiled an infiltration attempt along the line of control in the Kiran sector. The infiltration bid was foiled after the Indian troops at forward post spotted suspicious movement in the area, leading to the initiation of an unprovoked ceasefire violation from the Pakistani side. The Indian Armed Forces retaliated fiercely, destroying a large number of Pakistan Army bunkers, fuel dumps and launch pads. Multiple ceasefire violations by Pakistan Army from Gurez sector to Uri sector of Jammu and Kashmir led to severe casualties among innocent Kashmiri civilians and Indian security forces. Every time uh, that the ceasefire violation is attempted, it's uh, also a accompanied uh, uh, attempt for infiltration and the support by the Pakistan posts, which are in this area. And uh, Indian Army is giving a befitting reply to this uh, uh, desperation and the desperate act by the Pakistan Army and the terrorists. And uh, in the counter action by the Indian Army, uh, some of the posts were, were targeted and there was a precise destruction in this area. Registering its strong protest against the indiscriminate firing at the borders by Pakistan Army, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs condemned the deliberate targeting of innocent civilians by Pakistani forces, highlighting the country's deplorable act of choosing a festive occasion in India to disrupt peace and perpetrate violence. Noting the escalation in terrorist activities from across the border, India's Minister of External Affairs S.J. Shankar indirectly slammed Islamabad for its role in supporting terrorism, calling it a particularly egregious example of state-sponsored cross-border terrorism. As regards terrorism, the era of not my problem came to an end in 9-11 but it has still to produce a wholehearted international collaborative effort. We have in our immediate neighborhood a particularly egregious example of state-sponsored cross-border terrorism. The world is gradually becoming aware of the global nature of international terrorism. 
our relentless efforts have kept it in the spotlight, bringing out related aspects like terror finance, radicalization, and cyber recruitment. The goal remains to reach a comprehensive convention on this subject, and we will not rest till that happens. Despite facing backlash from all fronts, Pakistan continues to perpetrate terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. However, its deep-rooted network of terrorism is getting thwarted all across the region. Recently, the Jammu and Kashmir police along with the CRPF eliminated four Jaisha Muhammad terrorists in a counter-terrorism operation in Jammu. The terrorists who were hiding in a truck were killed near the Ban Toll Plaza on the highway of the Union Territory. जब चेकिंग चल रही थी तो एक ट्रक को रोका गया और जब ड्राइवर को उतारा गया तो वो वहां से फरार हो गया शक जब हुई तो जो ट्रक था उसकी तलाशी ली गई और तलाशी के दौरान जो पुलिस और सीआरपीएफ की पार्टी थी उन पे फायर आया और जवाबी कार्रवाई शुरू की गई धीरे धीरे और भी फोर्सेस ने ज्वाइन किया और लोकल वहां की आर्मी यूनिट ने भी हमारा साथ दिया एनकाउंटर तकरीबन तीन घंटे तक चला जिस पे हम पर काफी भारी मात्रा में एमिनेशन फायर किए गए ग्रेनेड्स फेंके गए Hours after the terrorists were neutralized, Indian Army Chief M. M. Naravni issued clear warning to Islamabad saying that the message was very clear for Pakistan and its terrorists that whosoever crosses the LOC to infiltrate into India would be dealt with the same manner and would not be able to go back. Experts say that it is high time for Pakistan to understand that with the change in the socio-political situations in Kashmir, it is no longer easy for them to hurt the prevailing peace and accord in the region. One thing is very clear that three seven, having uh, abrogated 370 and having uh, population, having seen the improvements happening in Kashmir, uh, certainly they do find a change and uh, this change is inevitable. Uh, and uh, Pakistan will have to work doubly hard uh, to make a dent in some manner uh, as far as uh, uh, situation or peacefulness of Kashmir is concerned. Uh, although they will keep working hard, that's a separate issue, but unfortunately uh, it's, it's not going well for them. Intelligence reports suggest that with winter around the corner, Close to 250 to 300 terrorists are waiting at the launch pads across the line of control. Although many infiltration attempts have been foiled this year, defense experts believe that the next few weeks would see a rise in infiltration raids and ceasefire violations. Well, 300 uh, of this uh, terrorists being there in the launch pad, well, it's uh, uh, nothing unexpected really in this period of the year is the fact that uh, it's going to be winter and during winter when the passes close uh, there is infiltration uh, infiltration is a little difficult at that point in time and it's been our experience that during this period just preceding the passes closing there's a surge in infiltration uh, add to that the fact that uh, they would like to internationalize the issue which they have been trying for a long time without uh, much of a success and uh, well i don't see any success that's going to come up their way uh, even now scrapping of the temporary special status of jammu and kashmir has badly rattled pakistan which is desperately trying to infiltrate terrorists into kashmir even as the situation in jammu and kashmir is returning back to normalcy the country has intensified its efforts at increasing the strength of terrorists in launch pads along the line of control to create havoc in the region. Such consistent attempts of Pakistan at fomenting trouble and breaching harmony in an otherwise peaceful Kashmir reek of its duplicity. Moving on.
the future of Afghanistan seems to be trapped in uncertainty. While the intra-Afghan talks in Qatri capital of Doha are still underway and have so far failed to make any significant progress, the U.S. administration is preparing for a hasty troop withdrawal from the water nation. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan also visited Afghanistan. The step is being seen as a way to change the world's outlook towards Pakistan as the country has long been held responsible for supporting the Taliban in Afghanistan. On one side, Pakistan is pretending to play a crucial role in US Taliban deal aimed at bringing peace in the war torn nation. On the other, it is consistently providing direct military and intelligence aid to Taliban to create unrest in Afghanistan. Instead of changing its dubious strategies, it is trying really hard to change the world's outlook towards it. Recently, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan held talks with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani in Kabul and vowed to do everything to reduce violence in Afghanistan. However, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani indirectly hit out at Imran Khan for harboring the Taliban and said that Pakistan must be able to articulate its own words. Mr. Prime Minister, you come with a, with a series of very important messages that yourself will articulate. But fundamental to this is that violence is not an answer. A comprehensive political settlement for an enduring peace within the, the framework of our values, our constitution in the Islamic Republic is the way to the future. Imran Khan's visit comes days after the United States announced the reduction of thousands of US military personnel from Afghanistan by mid-January, as President Donald Trump, who is facing the end of his time in power, is pushing to accelerate the withdrawal procedure. Acting U.S. Defense Secretary Christopher Miller confirmed that the U.S. will sharply reduce the number of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, stopping short of a full withdrawal from America's longest war. In light of these tremendous sacrifices, and with great humility and gratitude to those who came before us, I am formally announcing that we will implement President Trump's orders to continue our repositioning of forces from those two countries. By January 15, 2001, excuse me, I clearly am thinking of where this started in 2001. By January 15, 2021, our forces, their size in Afghanistan, will be 2,500 troops. Our force size in Iraq will also be 2,500 by that same date. This is consistent with our established plans and strategic objectives, supported by the American people, and does not equate to a change in U.S. policy or objectives. Analysts say that the hasty troop withdrawal from Afghanistan could plunge the war-wracked country deeper into violence. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg issued a stark warning that any premature withdrawal from Afghanistan could be dangerous. Trump's decision has also drawn criticism from some high-ranking Republicans and U.S. military officials who have been urging Trump to keep U.S. troops level at around 4,500 for now. I think it's extremely important here in the next couple of months not to have any earth-shaking changes with regard to defense and foreign policy. Uh, I think a precipitous drawdown in either Afghanistan or Iraq would be a mistake. I've so said publicly yesterday, and I hope that's <clears throat> precisely where these discussions uh, end up. There is a growing fear that the premature troop withdrawal could further embolden the Taliban and weaken the already fragile peace talks. Under a February deal between the United States and the Taliban, the remaining U.S. forces were to leave Afghanistan by May 2021 if the militants met certain conditions. However, several key U.S. demands still remain unmet, including the Taliban's commitment 
to break ties with Al-Qaeda. Meanwhile, there has been a surge in violence, with the Taliban continuing to carry out attacks targeting government leaders, security forces and civilians. After getting pulled up at FATF plenary in October this year, Pakistan has staged a new theatrics in one of its so-called anti-terrorism court. Hafiz Saeed, the mastermind of 26-11 Mumbai attacks, has been awarded a 10-year jail term in two terror financing cases. Pakistan, from a long time, has been facing immense pressure to crack down on terrorist groups and entities. Saeed's arrest comes after Pakistan was sustained into the grey list of FATF for the fourth consecutive time. A report. Mumbai terror attack mastermind and Jamaat ud dawa chief Hafiz Saeed was sentenced to 10 years in jail by an anti-terrorism court in Pakistan in two more terror financing cases. The drama of convicting Saeed is barely a subject of surprise because Pakistan from a very long time is known for initiating bogus counter-terrorism operations whose sole aim is to create an aura of mendicity around the world. It is widely known that Prime Minister Imran Khan's government provides special treatment to the UN-designated terrorist. Also, the counter-terrorism department officials are treating Hafiz Saeed as a VIP and he still roams in his SUV escorted by his aides. This is a clever ploy, a clever maneuvering on the part of Pakistan army. It is just trying to buy time, it is just trying to deflect the pressure uh, on account of F, the attitude of FATF and it is time to um, create a new image that Pakistan uh, government is seriously trying to take concrete steps against Hafiz Saeed or terrorists. This is, this is just clever manoeuvring, it has no substance. Along with Hafiz Saeed, the court also pronounced 10 and a half years imprisonment to three other JOD terrorists. The move can be seen as a time-buying stunt by Pakistan, which is already facing grave cash crunch and has a deadline to meet till the next FATF plenary in February 2021. If it does not show concrete steps taken against terror financing, then it will most certainly put into the blacklist of FATF, which will further push the country into serious financial crisis. This is the reason why a country which has always been hesitant in taking effective action against top terror leaders has now turned to convicting them in terror financing charges. However, this wouldn't see any change in the functioning of these terror leaders as they continue to operate freely regardless of where they are put as a state guest. I, I want to ask that what additional evidence has come why all of a sudden this action has been taken by Pakistan government? And when, this, when did this evidence come to the knowledge of uh, Pakistan government? All this is time to, this is time buying technique. It is a legal battle. Now the Pakistan government will wash its hands off by saying that a legal procedure will take its own time. Overnight judgment cannot be uh, implemented. So Hafiz Saeed will go to Supreme Court. Supreme Court will start giving dates after dates after dates. And this process will continue by the time the pressure from FATA field decreased or likely to get mitigated. Under pressure from the international community, Pakistani authorities have launched investigations into matters of the Jamaat ud Dawa, Lashkar e Taiba, and Falai Insaniyat Foundation regarding their holding and use of trust to raise funds for terrorism financing. But the investigations are merely an eyewash since no significant terror leaders have received any punishment for their heinous deeds. If Pakistan government is really serious that it wants to um, uh, leave an impression, give an impression that it is serious against acting against terrorists, hand over half a say to us. Then, then we will know the, that intention of Pakistan government. Hand over half a say to us. Let half a say face all the inquiry with regard to 2611. That is not going to happen. So this is just a clever ploy. There's no substance. Despite being lost in Lahore jail, Hafiz Saeed is able to run his so-called charitable trust and madrasas, 
because of his tall stature in Islamabad. However, with global money laundering and terror financing institutions keeping close watch on the Pakistan's terror financing activities, the government is taking pseudo steps in counter terror financing. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savijay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.